Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law. And according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus. But Jesus gave no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said. Don't you realise I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was a day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claim to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, And so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, 
it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Amen. On the 14th of August 1941, Catholic priest Maximilian Kolbe died in an Auschwitz starvation bunker. Prisoner 16670. A couple of weeks earlier, a prisoner had escaped from the camp prompting the deputy camp commander to pick ten men to be starved to death in an underground bunker by way of deterring future escape bids. One of the men, Franciszek Gajonicek, cried out, My wife! My children! Father Colby volunteered to take his place and his offer was accepted. According to an eyewitness who was a janitor at the camp, Colby remained a serene presence, leading the others in prayer each day. In the end, he was the only one left and was given an injection of carbolic acid to finish him off. The account suggests that he calmly raised his left arm and waited for the deadly injection. On January 13th, 1982, Air Florida Flight 90 crashed into the icy waters of the Potomac River as it was nearing Washington, D.C. 73 of the 79 passengers were killed in the initial impact. Among the six who survived was Arlen D. Williams. Footage shows a rescue helicopter hovering over the crash site and lowering a rope to the survivors. Williams got hold of the rope but took it to a fellow survivor who was pulled from the freezing water. Again the rope was lowered and again Williams took it to another of those still in the water. Five times in all this scene was repeated and all five of those who were pulled up survived. But when the copter returned for the sixth time, it was too late. Arland Williams had succumbed to the cold and slipped beneath the waters to his death. The only one of those who had survived the initial crash to lose his life. Or should we say to give his life. There's no such thing as perfect illustrations, but these two at least take us into the right place. For Jesus gave his life that we might live. Jesus was whipped and beaten, slapped, spat at, mocked, ridiculed. Hearing the fullness of John's account must surely move us beyond passing interest to deep mourning and bitter tears and, yes, to heartfelt gratitude. Thirty years later, at a special event to honour Maximilian Kolbe, Franciszek Gajowiczek was among the first to speak. He declared, I want to express my thanks for the gift of life. And in 1994 he said, so long as I have breath in my lungs, 
I consider it my duty to tell people about the heroic act of love by Maximilian Kolbe. And that's what he did. In the end, dying at home in Poland at the age of 93. And might it be that we would have that same sense of thankfulness that we have life and that we have it in all its fullness. And might we too say, so long as I have breath in my lungs, I consider it my duty to tell people about the heroic act of love by Jesus. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Yes, for me and for you. For us. Lord God, mighty and glorious, for your love that continues creating, your power that is forever strong, your mercy that is always forgiving, and your purposes that never cease, you deserve to receive our praise. Lord Jesus Christ, revealer of the Father's love, proof of his power, instrument of his forgiveness, fulfiller of his purpose. Receive our praise. Lord Jesus Christ, once despised and rejected, broken and beaten, condemned and crucified, we celebrate you now, our risen Lord. In fact, Lord of Lords, and source of perfect forever life. Receive our praise. Loving God, you showed us through Christ 
that what seemed to be weakness was strength, what appeared to be defeat was victory, what appeared to be the end was a new beginning. You who turned our expectations on our head, accept our worship. Forgive us for so easily being deceived by appearances, for measuring success by our own flawed standard. Teach us to recognise that it is not only in the risen Christ, but in the broken Christ. Not only in the victorious Christ, but in the crucified one. Not only in the living Christ, but in the dying Jesus that we see your purposes fulfilled and your will being done. So we give you our praise in his name. Amen. And now, go in peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you today and forevermore. Amen.